Welcome back to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. You know, your trusted source for reliable information on HIV testing prevention and treatment. Absolutely. And today, uh, we're going to be diving into a topic that's, I think, particularly relevant to our listeners. Okay, so everyone's been talking about this new HIV treatment, mm-hmm. EBT 101, yeah. and we had to do a deep dive into it. Yeah, for sure. It's a gene therapy that uses CRISPR, right? and it's supposed to like actually get rid of HIV. Yeah, so that's the big question everyone's asking. Could this be the thing we've been waiting for? It's definitely a really interesting development. Um, what's really interesting about it mm-hmm. is it goes after HIV in a totally different way than most therapies. Hmm. Most of them suppress the virus. Okay. It's like... Managing it. Yeah, managing a chronic condition. Yeah. But EBT-101, yeah. it's designed to target the integrated proviral RNA. Okay, and for people who don't know. Yeah, so that's the HIV genetic material that's actually become part of the host's DNA. It's wild that the virus can just... I know, it's crazy. ...insert itself yeah. into our DNA. It's kind of freaky. And then most meds are just going after the active virus. Exactly. They're kind of like playing whack-a-mole with the virus. Yeah. You know, it pops up here, you suppress it there. Mm. EBT-101 goes for the source. Mm. Like, by removing parts of the HIV genome... Okay. ...it aims to disrupt the virus's ability to replicate on like a really fundamental level. So instead of chasing it around, it's like disrupting its blueprint? Exactly. It's like messing with the instructions so it can't make more copies of itself. I like that. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. And this is crucial because it addresses those like sleeper cells. Yeah, the latent HIV. The latent HIV, that's a big one. Yeah, current medications can't quite get rid of that. Nope, and that's a major reason why a cure has been so hard to find. So EBT-101, it's offering a way to potentially like target yeah disable those cells totally and the exciting part is yeah. it's already been tested in humans oh wow yeah. okay yeah so tell me about these clinical trials okay so the first thing with any new therapy is safety obviously ebt 101 passed with flying colors oh wow it was generally safe and well tolerated which is huge especially for a therapy this new mm-hmm. they also found good biodistribution So that means it got to where it needed to go in the body? Exactly. It reached the targeted cells. Okay. But, of course, the million-dollar question... Did it work? Yeah, did it actually work? Did it prevent the virus from... From rebounding. From rebounding. That's the big one. Okay. So the results were... uh, Surprising. Kind of interesting. Okay. It didn't prevent viral rebound in all the participants. Okay. But some of them experienced delayed rebound. Mm Mm-hmm. So the virus took longer to return. Interesting. Yeah. So not a complete knockout, Uh, but it's like weakening the virus's hold. That's a good way to think about it, yeah. Okay. It suggests that even if it's not achieving a complete cure, yet it's messing with the virus's ability to replicate. Okay. Which is a step in the right direction. Yeah, definitely a step in the right direction. Sure. It feels like a step toward a functional cure, Mm -hmm. even if we're not quite there yet. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. What makes this CRISPR approach unique compared to other gene therapies? So it's all about precision. EBT-101 uses a specific type of CRISPR that can target and cut out very specific parts of the HIV genome. So it's not just like going in and... It's not a blunt instrument. Yeah. This precision is key because it minimizes the risk of off-target effects. Meaning it's not gonna... Yeah, it's less likely to affect other genes. Mess up other stuff. Exactly. Okay. So it's like having a molecular scalpel. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, going in and making very precise edits to the HIV DNA. That's awesome. It's really cool. And that's what makes EBT-101 so promising. Yeah. Offers the potential to disable HIV without all those unintended consequences. That is promising, but this is still super early. Oh yeah, for sure. In the research process, right? Yeah, definitely. What are some of the scientific hurdles that EBT-101 still faces? Well, one of the biggest challenges is making sure the therapy can actually reach all of the latent HIV reservoirs in the body. So it's like, even if the delivery system works, Mm -hmm. it's about getting to every single infected cell. Yeah, HIV is really good at hiding. We need to make sure that EBT-101 can find and disable every last bit of that viral DNA. That is tricky. It is. And then there's the question of like, how long does this actually last? That's the other big one. Long-term efficacy. Exactly. We need to see how long the effects of EBT-101 last Mm -hmm. and whether the virus might find ways to mutate. Right. And like evade the therapy over time. HIV is a tricky virus. It is. It's good at what it does. 
unfortunately. So a lot of work ahead, but it sounds like a major step forward. Absolutely. We've seen how current medications, they can't quite get to all of that latent HIV. Um, what does this mean for like people listening who are on meds right now? Oh yeah, that's an important point. Yeah. While EBT 101 is super exciting, yeah. it's not a replacement for existing treatments. Okay. Not yet, anyway. So for those listening who are on those medications, yeah. don't throw them out just yet. Exactly. BBT 101. Yeah. Still early stages. Right. But it seems like it could be a powerful new tool. Definitely. What happens next for EBT 101? So the next step is bigger and longer clinical trials. Of course. Got to get more data on efficacy and safety. Mm -hmm. And researchers are also going to be looking at ways to optimize the therapy. Okay. Maybe combining it with other treatments to enhance its effectiveness. So finding the right combo. Yeah, exactly. And this is where early HIV detection becomes even more important. Absolutely. Yeah. If this treatment does become available, yeah. knowing your status early could be crucial. So important. It really is. Okay, so let's dive into those early detection options. Okay. Because while we wait for new therapies, knowing your status mm -hmm. is so crucial. Yes. What types of HIV tests are out there? So there are a few different types. Okay. Each with its own pros and cons. Gotcha. We have nucleic acid tests or NATs. Okay. And those can detect HIV super early, sometimes as early as 10 days after exposure. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Why aren't those tests used all the time? So they're highly accurate. Okay. But they're also more expensive and they require special equipment. Oh, okay. Which can be a barrier. So there are trade offs? Mm hmm. Okay. What are the other options? So then there are antigen antibody tests. Okay. Which look for both HIV antigens and antibodies mm -hmm. in the blood. These tests can usually detect infection within 18 to 45 days after exposure. So a, a bit longer of a window. Yeah. Okay. Are those as accurate? They are very accurate. Okay. Especially after that window period. Okay. And they're more widely available and less expensive than the NATs. Okay. So it sounds like there's a good balance there. Yeah, I think so. Between and the accuracy and the cost and accessibility. Exactly. Okay. Cool. And then finally, we have the antibody tests. Mm -hmm. These are the more common ones. Okay. They just look for antibodies okay. produced by the body mm -hmm. in response to HIV, yeah. but they take longer to become accurate. Okay. How long are we talking? It can be anywhere from 23 to 90 days. Wow. That's yeah, awesome. a pretty big range. A range of options, mm -hmm. different levels of accuracy, different window periods. Mm -hmm. The key message is yeah. testing is available. Yes. And it's crucial. Very. But where can people go to find these tests? So the source material mentioned this website. Okay. HIVRNNADESGUIDE.com. Got it. It's a resource for testing information. Okay. They offer affordable and confidential testing services. That's fantastic. We'll be sure to include that link in the show notes for anyone who wants to learn more. Perfect. It's kind of wild to think about, like, how far HIV treatment has come, you know? It really is. We've gone from, like a diagnosis that was a death sentence mm -hmm. to a manageable condition. Yeah. And now we're talking about potential cures. I know, it's amazing. It's gotta be incredible for people living with HIV. Oh, absolutely, it's yeah. a huge shift. Yeah. You know, I think for a lot of people, there was this sense of like- Resignation? Yeah, resignation, learning to live with the virus long-term. Mm. Now there's genuine hope for a future where HIV isn't- Doesn't define you. Yeah, it's not this life-defining diagnosis. I can imagine what a weight off your shoulders that would be. It's huge. But I'm sure there's also I'm some so hesitation. Sorry. Healthy skepticism. Healthy skepticism, yeah. There have been so many promising treatments. That haven't panned out. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, we gotta be cautious. What would you say to someone listening who's feeling that mix of mm. excitement, but also maybe some hesitation? I'd say it's okay to feel hopeful, you know? Yeah. This research is a big step forward. Mm -hmm. It's definitely something to be excited about. Yeah. But we also need to be realistic. Right. It takes time to really test these new therapies. Yeah. Science is a process. It's not always it these not huge small. leaps forward. A lot of small steps. Yeah. And this is where ongoing research is so crucial. It's essential. We need to understand how this therapy works, you know, in different people, how it interacts with other medications, right. how we can make it even better. So even with these promising results, yeah. still a lot of unanswered questions. Absolutely. What are some of the things that researchers are like zeroing in on as they move forward with EBT 101? So one of the big areas is combination therapy. Okay. We know that HIV is a tough virus to beat mm -hmm. and one therapy alone might not be enough for a cure. Yeah. So researchers are looking at how to combine EBT 101 
with other treatments. Like what? Things like broadly neutralizing antibodies or even therapeutic vaccines. Okay. Just to create a more powerful attack. So it's kind of like yeah. hitting it from all angles. Exactly. Targeting okay. different parts of the virus in its life cycle. And then another thing we talked about was delivery. Yes. Delivery is key. Making sure it gets to every single infected cell. It's a challenge. Yeah. You know, we need to make sure EBT-101 can reach all those latent HIV reservoirs. Including those yeah. hard to reach spots. The brain and other tissues. That seems super difficult. It is, okay. And then there's this idea of personalized medicine. Oh yeah, that's a hot topic. It's everywhere. It's so cool how it's being applied to HIV research. Yeah. You know, not everyone responds to treatments the same way. Right. So there's a lot of interest in tailoring EBT-101 to individual patients. Based on? Yeah, based on their genes. Their specific situation. Exactly. You seem really excited about the future of this research. Oh, I am. What is it that has you feeling so optimistic? Well, I think it's the way all these different fields are coming together. Like, what do you mean? Like, we're seeing breakthroughs in gene editing, yeah. immunotherapy, vaccine development. Mm. All these approaches are converging, and it's like... Creating this? Yeah, this amazing potential for the future of HIV treatment and prevention. It really feels like we're moving towards a future where right. HIV is... Not a life sentence. Yeah. Not a life sentence. Not even like yeah. this thing that you have to constantly manage. Maybe just a distant memory. That's the dream, right? That's the hope. That's what drives a lot of us. That's amazing. Yeah. It feels more achievable every day. I love that. Yeah. So before we wrap up our EBT 101 deep dive, mm -hmm. I have one more question for you. Okay. For listeners who are like new to all this. Yeah. What's the one key takeaway about where we are in the fight against HIV? I think the most important thing is that things are changing. Okay. The whole landscape of HIV treatment is evolving. Yeah. We're not just managing the virus anymore. We're going for the cure. We're aiming for a cure. Wow. And while we're not there yet, yeah. research like this gives us every reason to be optimistic. I love that optimism. It's exciting. It's contagious. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. It's been my pleasure. Really appreciate it. It's been a really cool deep dive. Yeah, I think so too. For our listeners who like want to learn more, yeah. we'll be sure to include links to all the resources, including that HIVRNTestGuide.com in mm. the show notes. It's amazing how easy it is to find information now. Yeah. You know, knowledge is power. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially when it comes to health. For sure. The more we understand about HIV, the better we can fight it. Well said. And yeah. while we wait for these cures to like become available, like yeah. knowing your status so important. is the most important thing. I completely agree. I mean, it lets you make informed decisions about your health. Mm -hmm. Take steps to protect yourself and others. Absolutely. This has been a roller coaster, man. Uh huh. I know, right? Learning about the science behind EBT 101. Yeah. Hearing about its potential. It's pretty amazing. And just seeing how far we've come. It's incredible. It's given me a lot to think about. It's a rapidly evolving field. Yeah. It's a really exciting time to be involved in HIV research. Yeah. I hope this conversation has given your listeners a good sense of like, yeah, the progress that's being made. I think it has. Mm -hmm. And for our listeners, if you're feeling inspired, yeah. there's so many ways to get involved. For sure. You can support organizations doing work on the ground, mm -hmm. advocate for research funding. Yes. But most importantly, talk about HIV. That's huge. Let's break down the stigma. Yeah. Create a world where HIV is not this taboo subject. Absolutely. Open dialogue is so important. It really is. It helps create a more supportive environment for everyone. I think the biggest takeaway for me mm -hmm. is the hope surrounding this research. Yeah. We're not just talking about managing HIV anymore. Right. We're talking about a cure. A real possibility. It's powerful. It is for researchers and for people living with HIV. Yeah. It keeps us going, you know? Yeah. It keeps us searching for answers. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. The pleasure was all mine. Thank you for having me. And to our listeners, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay hopeful. The future of HIV treatment is looking brighter than ever, and we're all in this together until next time.